Good evening, my lovelies. Welcome back to another episode of listening to me talk to myself and making things. Well, sometimes I make things and sometimes I get really confused and forget what I'm doing. But tonight we're actually going to work on these little guys. And I, I know in my announcements I said something about a uh, itty bitty squiddy committee. I think it's an octopus, but either way, they're adorable, they're quick, and also can help me teach you some of the beginning stitches for uh, crochet. So we're gonna work on that. And unfortunately, my camera is kind of altering my color here for my yarn. Is this, what well, I'm looking at currently, is a mixture of light blues, dark blues, and violet, and lavender, and looks to me that you're seeing just various shades of blue. <laughs> Either way, still pretty. But we're gonna figure out how to make one of these puppies. Uh, and I will go over all of the uh, stitches needed to work on, the materials needed to work on, kind of like when I did my first episode uh, with um, words with my cross stitchery. So we're going to put this little guy right there for a minute. So when it comes to crochet, there's a few things you're going to need to start off your project. Um, first, you need a pattern. Because your pattern, whether you write it or you find it online, is going to be what helps you know what you need. It's going to tell you your hook size, the weight of your yarn, it's going to tell you your stitches, and give you step-by-steps and how-tos. Um, <clears throat> and the fun thing is, the patterns come in various languages. They can come written out, they can come drawn out, because that's that's a little confusing. It's kind of like reading uh, hieroglyphics. But, oddly enough, once you get used to that, um, everything will make sense over time. I will actually show you those next time. Uh we get together to do this. So we're gonna make this little puppy and for this guy we need a few things. Now, I'm not saying you need to have a giant collection of hooks. You can this collection here actually comes as a set. I found these guys I believe at Joann's which by the way is right now probably your best friend when it comes to any materials you need for projects because they seem to be still going strong. Uh, same with Hobby Lobby. Um, Michaels, unfortunately, seems to be cutting back on their yarn selection. So I would stick to the bigger stores, even if you've got to go drive about 30 minutes plus to get to them like I do. Your average hook sizes range from E hooks all the way up to ends, and they can go smaller. As you can see from these guys way over here, you can't even see the hook very well on that puppy. That's a 1.3 millimeter hook. That's for things really small, like if you're going to do lace or something. Really, really big guys are for bulkier yarns, like the really, th those really thick blankets that you see. Those are these puppies. Your EFG hooks are usually the ones you're going to use for those really pretty little crochet dolls you see running around the internet. Whereas uh, your HIJs, those are more for hats or scarves, um, medium weight uh, yarns. You're also going to need, well, you don't actually need those if you don't want them. I use the I use these guys to help me if I'm attaching something to something else. Like I have a cat ears hat that I made for a friend of mine. I use these to help keep the ears in place so that when I sewed them on, I didn't sew them in the wrong direction. Which, that's happened multiple times, and it takes you only doing that, you know, 20, 30 times before you realize you're doing it the wrong way and decide to fix it. Um, a tapestry needle is also going to be your friend for uh, sewing in or weaving in your ends when you're done with your work. A tapestry needle or a carpet needle, one or the other, because this, 
I've got various sizes depending on the width, I'm sorry, the weight of my yarn. Because a yarn needle, a lot of patterns say you might want a yarn needle. The only issue with a yarn needle is this is a yarn needle. This giant blue guy right here. It's big, it's bulky, and it's about as thick as my crochet hook itself. And as you can see, that would really warp a little guy like this. So we're not going to use that one. I don't think it's... This one hasn't moved in so long, I can't even... There we go. I can barely get it out of my entire set. And scissors. I'm a big fan of these, um, even though they have... I have broken them pretty bad, pretty righteously, but I have uh, rigged them back together with the help of zip ties and E6000, E6 E600 epoxy glue, whatever that stuff is that you can pretty much glue anything, anything else that's never going to come off. And Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, all of them will uh, carry these guys, this little B-O-Y-E boy. Boye crochet pouches. Or, if you really want to, you can go and find patterns to make your own crochet pack. Ah. Thank you, Captain Kyle E6000. Then you have your yarns. Your yarn comes in various weights. That's pretty much letting you know how bulky it's going to be. And depending on your project, you're going to want to double check the weight of your yarn. Um, certain things, your weight doesn't really matter. Um, keep in mind if you're going to make an article of clothing that's going to be worn, like a sweater, for example, you need to follow the weight as closely as you can on those because <laughs> the weight of your yarn matters. If you use a smaller weight than the pattern requests, then your article is going to be smaller than what the pattern is writing it out for. Um, but when it comes to these little guys, your weight doesn't really matter. Your hook doesn't really matter. If you want this to be bigger, use a thicker weight of yarn. Use a bigger hook. Add a few rounds somewhere and it will be bigger. If you want it smaller, God forbid, that just sounds terrifying, you can use a lighter weight yarn, like a baby yarn for example. That will stretch and it'll be, it's pretty light. Use a smaller hook and you can make it smaller. Not sure why you'd want to because it's already the size of a ping pong ball but some people out there just want to see the world learn so what we're gonna need for this project though is a uh, medium yarn which is this puppy right here a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook which most crochet hooks have your millimeter and it also has a letter designation uh, a 3.5 millimeter is also known as an e-hook. Um, again, very popular hook. Um, you're going to need a small amount of stuffing, polyfill, fiber fill, whatever you want to call it. I get this stuff in a... the best way I found to get it, I've got this thing as a giant, like, 10-pound box from Amazon. I could probably hide my toddler in that box, but, um... The, it's like $10 box, $10, $20 box, and it lasts me forever. And then you have a fun box for the said toddler to play in when you're done. So win-win. Um, we're also going to need some safety eyes, or you could use black beads. Knowing that I'm going to have... Um, little, little ones playing with this, I'm personally going to use safety eyes. And these guys are a whole different kettle of fish. They come in various sizes, various locations. Um, put my little pouch on. I got these eyes are nine millimeter. These I picked up from Hobby Lobby. The kicker with these safety eyes, though, is you want to be 100% sure they're going where you want them to go. Because once you insert these and you pop them down a few rungs, because if you can see, there are little notched ridges on this. It's going to lock in place. It's not going to go anywhere. 
even if this were to get chewed up by a dog, which <laughs> that's happened, I have found no yarn, but I have found safety eyes still stuck together because they are just that strong. So make sure that you have the amount you need. Make sure they're in the right spot. Double check. Put both eyes in first. Put them in the right. Make sure you can <laughs> eyeball it, if you will. Um, and go from there. They come smaller. They come bigger. It all depends on what you need for your pattern. And again, the pattern I have is saying you can use beads or safety eyes. I don't want this to end up in my daughter's or soon to be soon ad additional son i don't want that ending up in their belly so safety eyes are the way to go for me we also need a yarn needle or a sewing needle or a tapestry needle because you're going to need to sew up the, the bottom of this puppy when you're done and again i personally use a tapestry needle because the yarn needle for me is big bulky and chunky and i don't like it so when you're starting off, there's also a few stitches to get you going. This pattern actually has, we're gonna use things called a chain, a stitch, a single crochet, a half double crochet, slip stitches. And we're also going to be doing increases and decreases. I know that all sounds like Latin and it sounds a little terrifying, but stick with me, it'll be okay. Scout's on it. Um, we're going to take our skein, well, cake, I guess, because I, you can buy your yarns in various shapes and sizes. You can buy them in the full skein, so those, those, uh, wound up ovals you see in stores, in cakes like this, in actual balls. Um, me personally, most of my yarn, I use, I prefer Red Heart, because it's always a nice medium work medium weight yarn the colors are vibrant the material and the, the yarn is just easy to work with it doesn't fray most of my yarn is red heart um but it comes in that oval shape and i'm kind of my desk notwithstanding because it's currently a mess this is the only clear spot on my desk um <clears throat> i bought a yarn winder and it's very very cathartic and I feel like a little old lady, but winding all my yarn balls and organizing my entire collection was brilliant. But we have a kick of yarn. I can either, either take it from the middle here, which I would do, but if I do, it's eventually going to weaken the entire integrity of my yarn. Take here, so I'm actually going to start from the outside. So the first thing that we're going to do here. Our pattern says to make a magic ring or a magic circle or it, some patterns can also say to single crochet in a circle or in a ring. It all means the exact same thing. It wants you to start up in such a way that you can pull a piece of your yarn and close what you were just working on. Um, also, before we start, we're going to need a placeholder. A placeholder can be that little ring that you saw in my pouch over here, or it can just be a piece of scrap yarn from a previous project that's a different color than the one you're working with. And I'll show you what that is as we continue. But, magic ring. Hold your yarn. You're going to loop it. Just like that. Over top of the other. And what we're going to do is we're going to put six single crochet in that magic ring. So a single crochet, and unfortunately my camera is not the best for this because I'm already seeing fuzzies, is literally putting your hook through the yarn you already have and pulling the other yarn through. So we're going to go into your magic ring, up. Pull the yarn underneath the ring, so now you have two loops on your hook. Loop your yarn again, and pull it through. Now we have two single crochets. 
one, two. And we're going to do that again under, pull, pull through, under, pull it through. So we have one, two, three, four. Remember, we needed six. So five and six. If you look at what we have, it looks like a straight line. And as you can see, my little buddy over here is very round. So this is where the magic part of the circle comes in. See your little tail that you got going on? Hold on to your work, grab your tail, and pull your tail. And now what you're working on is a circle. And it's not a straight line. That's the fun part. Two, three, four, five, six. Now this pattern does what we call crochet in the round, which means you're not going to connect what you're working on and finish off the round. You're making a hat or something that has uh, solid stripes in it, for example, you would slip stitch and then you would chain. So you would pretty much finish off the row you're on and move up one. It sounds really confusing and I'm sorry, but um, it's pretty much the equivalent of working on a typewriter. Type, 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 type. Click, zing, and it goes to the next line. That's pretty much your slip stitch and your chain. What we're doing is they're just going to keep going in a circle, winding up like the stair from the Tower of Babel. Babel? Babel? I always called it Babel. Apparently people call it Babel. One, two, three, four, five, six. So our next row is going to be increases. Increases is pretty much exactly how it sounds. We're going to put two stitches in one of these stitches we already have. So the next row is going to double the stitches that we have. Currently we have six. So we're going to put two of these single crochets in the, cro in the stitches we already have. So go one, two, and we're, all you're going to do is take your hook and if you're looking at your work, it looks kind of like um, a braid. This is a visual for those that can't see what I'm really doing. See how we have a piece here and a piece here and put your hook under both. So put it under that braid and do that single crochet we were just doing in that braided area. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now we have doubled the size of our little originating circle. Now this is where I'm going to insert this puppy right here. I'm going to pull a little bit of extra yarn, put my hook through my most recent stitch, and pull this through. This is going to be my little tail, little chain there, to uh, help me remember where my rows end because your patterns will always tell you, well, should, should tell you that when you get to the end of this row, you should have this many stitches. Helps keep you in check, it helps keep me in check. But I also can't always remember where I am. I'm also a bit scatterbrained. I'll put my work down. I will walk away for minutes, hours, <clears throat> months, <clears throat> um, and forget where I was. So it's always smart to have something, whether it's those little hoop circles or a piece of yarn, either way. So currently we have 12 stitches. The next row, we're going to do one single crochet in the first stitch and then two in the next stitch. So we're gonna do a single crochet and then an increase. We're gonna do that around so that we have 18 stitches at the end. So one, increase, one, increase, one, 
increase. One, increase. It's also a good idea to make sure you're not accidentally crocheting with the tail of your work or possibly crocheting with your uh, stitch marker, um, which is why I suggest you use a yarn that is a different color because I have done that before. I've gotten halfway through a, a row and realized, unfortunately, I'm crocheting with the tail of my, this is the tail of my work, or I've been working with my stitch marker and I had to undo everything I did. And thankfully, when it comes to crochet, undoing mistakes is so much easier than a uh, cross stitch. Cross stitch, you gotta sit there and painstakingly, very carefully, remember where you were stitching, in which direction you were stitching and pull everything out. When it comes to crochet, it's as easily, easy as pulling out my hook and just pulling the yarn and it just kind of <laughs> unravels all the way down. Um, that is not as easy to do if you have more of a natural fiber yarn, like alpaca, for example. Because that yarn is woven in such a way that it will uh, cinch on to other stitches. So those I would suggest being very careful with and watching what you're doing. So our next line is uh, two single crochet and then an increase. So we're going to do one, two, increase, one, two, increase. <laughs> Do, 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 one, two, increase, two, do, 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 and with that row, that will bring our stitch count up to 24. A good thing to keep in mind is when you're doing a round project or any, well, actually be real, any crochet product I've worked on so far, the first few rows are going to be increases because you're going to slowly build up your size. Once you get to the size that the thing is supposed to be, then you're going to just keep going in circles just to get some height on it. So if you compare us here, We've done one, two, three, four rows. So one, two, three, four rows. And now we've gone about as out as far as we want size wise. And now we're going to go down in a straight line. So we're pretty much just going to stitch in circles. Five, six, seven, eight. Four rows are just going to be circles. If you're not sure what row or what round you're on, your crochet is in little ridged lines right now. So just count one, two, three, four. We're on four. So another good way to remember where you are in your pattern is by counting that because your pattern is usually going to list you by round one, do this, round two, do this, three, do this, four, do this, so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. So we have done the first four rows. Now for five, six, seven, and eight, we're just going to go in a circle. So every stitch you've already done, you're going to put one stitch in the previous stitch. We're not increasing anything. We're not doing anything special. We are just doing a single crochet in each stitch. <laughs> Your single crochet it isn't the smallest stitch you can make. Your smallest stitch is actually something called a slip stitch. Um, if you're reading a pattern, it usually comes up as an SLST because we, 
us, cro us crocheters, or hookers as I love when we call ourselves, um, we have our hands full. We can't write out full words like single crochet whenever you need one. Because let's be real, your pattern's full of it. So we have a shorthand. So SL space ST is slip stitch. A uh, shorthand for single crochet is SC. Magic circle or magic ring, because the pattern can't alternate the wording there, is either MR or MC. Uh, if you need to do other stitches, like a double crochet, for example, is DC, or a half double crochet is HDC. Once you get the hang of uh, cutting words into smaller words, it kind of rolls off the tongue. It makes it sense. It makes sense. And uh, Captain Kyle Games has a point. If he can learn how to do this, so can you. Of course, poor guy has his hands full doing his own streaming, so I think his crochet stuff has kind of gone to the wayside, but he still knows how. Two, three, four, five, six. Two more rows. Of course, between me and his mother doing this, if he hadn't picked it up, something is obviously wrong. <clears throat> What's interesting, though, about our yarn choice here is because it changes colors, you can see it slowly start to emerge in your pattern. Uh, certain yarns, depending on how quickly they change the color, you can actually unconsciously, for the most part, make it so that you can only it'll start making its own pattern in your project, which is always cool when that happens. I have yet to figure out how to make it happen intentionally, but I've had a lot of gorgeous accidents happen with my variegated color changing yarn. I've also realized I'm kind of like a goblin to shiny things when I go to Joann's and they have the yarn sale and they have new color combinations i don't know what i'm going to do with you know four skeins of underwater mystery but i'm definitely going to buy these for something but that's how i have my my collection of variegated colorful yarns not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I know I'm going to buy enough skeins to make a project out of it in case something does come along. But that's something you also want to keep in mind. If you are buying yarn for a project, I personally will buy an extra skein in case I mess up or in case um, the person I'm working on, working on the thing for, needs it to be bigger. Or, but let's be real, mostly in case I mess up or I add more stitches where I shouldn't have, or something hinky happens. I like to plan ahead, because I don't like trekking myself out to my Joann's, because it's about 30, 40 minutes away. It's a long drive, especially when you're very, very pregnant. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've gotten to eight. We still have 24 stitches, but if you'll notice, We've gotten to the point where our octopus, our little squid buddy, is going to get a little smaller. So the next thing we're going to learn how to do is decrease. Now your pattern, depending on your pattern, depending on who writes it, depending on what wording they're comfortable with, it's going to be either a single crochet together, a single crochet two together, like two, the number two, or it's just going to say decrease. My patterns, I write them as decrease or DEC because it's just easier shorthand. It takes out all the middle work of me specifying what stitches. It's just decrease it, take away a stitch. Pattern we're following has single crochet, single crochet two 
together and then single crochet in the next stitch. The shorthand for that is SC, the number two, and then TOG, which again, if you don't know how to read a pattern, it's like looking at Greek. But <clears throat> what we're gonna, what a decrease is, is we're gonna do our single crochet like we did before, but instead of pulling this through like we normally would, we're gonna go through the next stitch as well pull through that and then we're going to pull through and as you can see that makes one stitch so this round we're going to do a decrease and then a single crochet decrease single crochet all the way around so we decreased one now we're in a single crochet now we're going to decrease again so in one in the next and loop through both and single crochet. Decrease, single. Uh, there is such a thing as what certain patterns call an invisible decrease and that involves just doing a decrease on the first on the front row. See how this looks kind of like a braid here? You have a front stitch and a back stitch. Thank you. Uh, if you only do the decrease in the front stitch, it actually is supposed to add to the illusion that you didn't actually decrease it. I am personally not going to worry about that because this project is very small, but certain patterns do call for invisible decreases. Like my, my pride bunnies that I have, the pattern I modeled them after, it actually requests a invisible decrease so you can't actually, you can't see as clearly where the stitches are getting smaller. It just helps make your piece look a bit more appeasing. Peeling? Pretty. <clears throat> so we've done that. And our pattern says in the last stitch, we're going to do a slip stitch. Pretty much by doing that slip stitch, we're going to, um, the best way I can describe it is flatten out our row here that we've been working on because we've been going in circles the entire time. So if you were to look at this, um, yes, uh, yes, um, if you look at this slightly, kind of, you can see that this row is actually a little higher than its compatriot here because you kind of got it at an angle because you've been going in circles. But the pattern requests that so we do a slip stitch to try and fix that and bring everything flat. So a slip stitch is pretty much a single crochet but without, because we're going to go through, loop or yarn like so, but instead of pulling this through, we're just going to pull that loop through the loop we already have. And it will give you that illusion of flattening out your piece. So we do that, and then we're going to chain one according to our pattern. And chaining one is simple, actually. You loop your yarn, pull the yarn through, and you've chained one. Check you out. You guys are awesome. You've chained one. Now the next part of this is working in the back loops only. Uh, short hands for that are BLO. So the back loop only means, see how our little braided section has that back and that front that I talked about? We're only going to work in this back one right here on this section. Um, but before we do that, because this is when we start closing this puppy up and making it our round little squid buddy. Before you do that, make your life easy. If your pattern has eyes that you're going to put in it, you want to put those in around now-ish because putting them in later is going to be uh, a mixture of nine possible and a pain in the neck. This pattern 
suggests putting your eyes about seven rows down and about five stitches apart. So we're going to count from the where we started. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you want that to be between six and seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna pop our first eye. The first eye is usually the easier one because you can just put that thing in willy nilly, see how you like it. And then you put in your next one. Now it says uh, five stitches between. All these little tiny holes that you see is what you want to count. Trying to count the stitches, depending on your yarn, is going to be aggravating, to say the least. So I count the, those little itty bitty holes. And you also have to kind of figure out, do you want your eye to be over here? Or do you want your eye to be over here? Where do you want his face to be? And since our yarn is kind of variegated, it doesn't really matter because it's all going to look kind of the same. So I'm going to go over here. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five little holes. I want to put this eyeball in the sixth one. So there's five stitches between. See? Isn't he cute? And this is where it's good to double check how it looks to you, the person making it. Because the pattern can tell you one thing, and that's fine and dandy, but if you don't like it, and you keep going, it's kind of like keeping your mouth shut of a hairdresser. You're going to get home and you're going to hate your life because you didn't speak up. Remember what I said earlier about these guys? You put this on, this eye is not going anywhere. If you don't like it, you might as well toss the entire project because you can't take this off easily. And those pliers and patience, and I only have the pliers. <laughs> so flip the puppy over. We're going to Pop this puppy on. Uh, be a little cautious. You don't want to snap it too tight because depending on your yarn, it can create indentions. Um, never fun. Now our eyes are in. Those eyes aren't going anywhere. They're called safety eyes for a reason, people. These will not end up in your kid's digestive tract or your dog's. Well, well. It might end up in your dogs, depending on the dog. My dog is a German Shepherd Rottweiler mix who likes to chew on things when she's bored. So this is like, you know, a big heartworm pill for her. This is a dog that likes ice cubes for fun. So, like I said, this next round, I'm doing back loops only. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a single crochet in the first two stitches and then a decrease because we're going to slowly close this puppy up. So <clears throat> my music has stopped. That's not a good thing. Hmm. Still streaming, still recording. Weird. I don't know why that stopped. Hmm. Wish I'd close out of that. I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay. So remember, back loop only, which pretty much is as easy as it sounds. We're only going to work in the back loop. We're still going to do our single crochets and our decreases, but in this back loop. So we're going to go one, two, and then decrease. Don't fret. It will look kind of wonky. Decreases usually do. Especially if you're just doing one loop. Uh, just the back loops. It kind of looks like you're pulling your yarn all cattywampus, which is why you want to be firm, but you also want to be a bit, uh, what's the word, forgiving, loose, fluid, flexible. 
you don't want to keep your stitches too tight because if you do, once you start to stuff it, you're going to have some issues because your stitches are going to pull. And I did that a lot when I first started out because I didn't know any better because I also learned to knit first and knitting is all about keeping your stitches tight whereas crochet is relaxing fluid motion and kind of just going with the flow. So I've kept a pretty steady grip so far but I haven't been pulling this stupidly tight because if it's too tight you're not going to be able to get your hook through there. And if you can't get your hook through there, if you're a really heavy-handed person, you're eventually going to get annoyed and stop doing the project because you can't feel your fingers and you're going to hurt your yarn and your project. So before we go any further, what I personally do is I'm going to pull this a bit so I don't start unraveling my work on accidentally because I've done that multiple, 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 way too many times. <clears throat> I'm going to hold this out of my way, and I'm going to start stuffing this puppy. I personally like to do a little rolling motion with my finger, because it kind of rolls your my polyfill and helps round out the yarn as I go. Um, and because this is a smaller guy, you also want to make sure your eyes aren't shifting on you, because those posts, if you look at this guy, if I move the post too much, his eye is going to get all wonky, and it'll stay that way. So you want to make sure you stuff above the eye posts that are in his head. And just kind of work your finger around and make sure he gets all rounded out. Because you can make this thing as round as you want, but if you don't stuff it right, one good run in the washing machine or one good playtime with your kid, or whoever you're giving this project to, and it's going to flatten, and you're not going to be able to fix it. But on the flip side, you also don't want to overstuff it, because if you overstuff it, then your stitches, you're going to see fluff through your stitches, and that's also not a good thing. How do you tell the difference, Critter? Mama D, how do I figure out the difference? Trial and error. It's my best, best advice. You figure out what works for you. I have so many, I actually still have some of my first uh, crochet projects that everything looks great up here and everything is nice and pretty and then you get to the bottom or wherever I was finishing off and everything is horrid because my stitches were too loose, my thing was overstuffed, it was just bad. So I, now, because I've been doing this now for oh gracious four Four years? Yeah, that sounds about right. If it if I don't like it, I will unravel, pull some stuffing out, squeeze things about a bit, and then restitch it. Anything short of near perfection doesn't get finished because I don't like selling bad product. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Cool. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to just decrease around. And you can't see it very well because A, my camera is not built for this. And C, my yarn is variegated so you can't really see it. But that, because we work in the back loop on this round, we have a lip that you can very faintly see here. Which is good. That's the lip we wanted that lip. Because that, my dearies, is where we're going to put our little buddy's tentacles when we're done. So, we're going to work in both loops again. And we're going to work our way around and decrease, make everything smaller until it's closed up. And then you'll have pretty much an itty bitty ball with eyes because at this point it can be anything you can add you can add the tendrils and make the octopus like we're going to be making or you could add 
various long strands of yarn and make a cute, adorable little spider. Or make long tentacles down here and make a little make a jellyfish. It is all about your creativity, my dear. It is your project. Once you get more comfortable with patterns. Well, they're not because we don't need it anymore. You can actually start modifying and tweaking things and bring other patterns together and make your own thing. Because that's the cool thing about crochet. A ball is a ball is a ball. Uh, an oval is an oval is an oval. You figure out how to do certain shapes, you can make anything you want. Dolls, pokeballs. Um, in my case, I found a pattern I liked because it taught me how to do new stitches. I used those new stitches and I made a whole new pattern out of it. It's fantastic. Now, you see we have an itty bitty hole here, but we're also done with all of our crocheting bits. So what we're going to do is, well, how I, how I write my patterns is we're going to slip stitch and finish off, which means you're going to be done crocheting. Some folks will say finish off leaving tail to sew or finish off and weave in your end. If you are done, like uh, with a granny square, for example, uh, you would finish off and weave in your ends with your tapestry needle, the one that I showed you earlier. But what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch like we did when we were up here. We're going to finish off our little round body and we're going to leave a tail to sew. So you're going to pull in a little bit of extra yarn, cut it free, and we're going to use our handy dandy tapestry needle. And we're going to sew up our squid. Now, personally, what I do to make it easier to put my yarn into my tapestry needle, you can either use one of those uh, thread, threader helper dealy bobs, the ones that look like a shiny penny that have that little diamond wiry thing. But if you use a tapestry needle, if you don't want to use the wiry thread helper, I take the end of my yarn and I twist it along with the fiber so it gets small and tight. And then I can use that to go through the eye of my needle. So now we have our tapestry needle and we are yarned up. And thank you to Captain Kyle Games because now I need to watch Indiana Jones. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew our hole closed. So we're going to sew just like you would with material. You're just gonna weave your yarn in and out of your stitches here at the bottom. And when you get back to where you started, kind of like with our magic circle at the beginning, we're gonna pull. See? And you finished it. Make sure you pull it tight because you don't want the ends to go anywhere. And if you like to sew, you already know what I'm going to do. If you don't, you're going to learn more stuff today. What I personally do is I will finish off the same way I do if I'm sewing a shirt or a dress. I'm going to sew, I'm going to take my needle, go under something, I'll go under like one bit of yarn here, and then I'm going to go through it, I'm going to pull tight. So I'm pretty much making it knot in on itself. And then I'm going to take that thread and I'm going to push it through my squid. Take out my tapestry needle, pull my yarn taunt just a wee bit, cut it, and then give my squid a little squeeze. And now he is completely stitched up down here safely. The yarn is knotted and the tail is somewhere hidden. The miasma of fluff that is the internal workings of our squid head, octopus head, whatever head you want to call it. Here, you're going to help me. You're going to hold that for me. We're going to need you again. Tails 
Uh, you can toss this. You can use it as a tail for another project. I personally usually keep a tail or two in my handy dandy pouch for separate projects. You can throw it away. If it's a really long tail, you can use it for detail work, depending on your other projects. Or as uh, CKG says, you can use it as friendship bracelet material. Also a possibility. But usually you want to use crochet floss for that. But you also use yarn, whichever one you want. But he is now a little ping pong ball or a little tadpole full of possibilities. But since we're making a little octopus squid friend buddy, we're going to have to go back to that little line that you can kind of see around here. We're going to make tentacles, these little nubby buddies. So we're going to take our knowledge of crochet with single crochets. We're going to add on half double crochets. And we're going to do a lot of those in the same stitch. That's how we get this cute little scalloped edge here. We're also going to keep in mind our knowledge of slip stitches. So for the next part of this pattern, it's always good to double. I personally will read my entire pattern to figure out where goes what goes where so I don't get all discombobulated because that happens frequently. This pattern actually has you holding your squid upside down, octopus upside down. That way your stitches are angled the right direction. I personally also start in the back. That way it's I can hide the beginning and end of what I'm doing. So we're going to pop our hook through that little extra lip, pull the yarn through, Doo -doo -doo. and we're going to lock our yarn in place by slipping, doing a slip stitch. Now what we're going to do is do a half double crochet. Now a double crochet is a stitch that is about mm, yay big, depending on your project, depending on your material, and depending on your hook size. A half double crochet is the halfway point between a single crochet and a double crochet. It gives you the thick bulkiness of the single crochet, but it's also a bit taller. I personally use it for hats and beanies because it leaves less holes for wind to get into your hair. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop our yarn, go into the next stitch, pull through. Now you're going to have three loops on your hook. Pull, loop through again. We're going to do five of those in that stitch. So that was one. So loop again, loop under, pull through. Loop again, under, through. Do that again, and fifth time is the charm. One, two, three, four, five. Got five of them on there. In the next little loop, we're going to do that slip stitch again. So loop under, pull your yarn through there, and then through what's on your hook. And that's going to give you this cute little scalloped petal looking thing. Now we're going to do that all the way around. So half double crochet five of them in this loop. So one, two, three, four, and five. Slip stitch in the next stitch. The slip stitch is what is making it pull together, give you this nice little loop that's going on. If you did not do that, all of these stitches would kind of run together and then it wouldn't give you the cute little squid leg effect. We're going to do this all the way around and we're going to end up with eight itty little legs. Two, three, 
four, five, slip stitch. Sorry, I know my hands keep going out of frame. Still getting used to not crocheting up in my face because I can't always see what I'm doing. There's also no rule saying that you have to do this with a variegated yarn. I just thought it was pretty and my daughter picked it out. Well, I gave her three options today. She picked out this one for the first one that I made and uh, Captain Kyle Games picked out our delightful little Bi Pride flag colors here. Our little pride squid. One, two, three, four, five. Slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five. And slip stitch. Now right about now you're probably can't even go and wait. There's not much space left. How else are we gonna do, do this? But let's double check here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven legs. Our little octopus needs one more leg, one more tentacle. And we've got two more stitches. So we can totally make that work. No panicking, no worries, my dears. One, two, three, four, and five. Fantastic. Slip stitch in the last stitch. Now we're gonna finish off. So you're gonna pull that tail through, give it a snip, And now I can do one of two things. You can either A, use your hook, loop under and pull these strands of yarn over to the center. Or what I do is I use my tapestry needle again. Because I don't like ending a project with the tails this close to the outside of my work, especially if I'm ending on a slip stitch. Because a slip stitch if not secured properly, can kind of mess up the overall look of your project. So I pretty all I all I did, nothing special, is I just, just like I'm sewing, went in and came up through a gap over here. Because that piece is our tail. That's what's holding all of our little flower petals here together. Now if this was a piece, if we were finishing and this was inside of something like a doll or something of that nature, I have no problem just doing garish knots and not worrying about hiding them at all because who's going to see it? Who's going to be the awful person who's going to unwind everything you just did to stare at your knot work and go, oh you! You did not. You didn't weave in the ends like you're supposed to. Nah, 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 nah. I personally don't like weaving in my ends before not you tying a knot in them because I'm always I'm kind of a worst case scenario type of mentality. If this gets tossed in the washing machine, will my ends unravel? Or if it gets caught while the, someone's playing with it, will the ends unravel and then I get angry people on my in my Etsy store saying that the thing I made for them is falling apart. So I knot my yarn, I use a hook, and I pull the tails back into the body so they're hiding. There's tails in there. We have the tail from when we sewed it shut, we have the two tails from putting on our tentacles, and we have the tail from the very, very top. We've got four tails hidden in this octopus squid buddy. And no one's gonna know, except you guys, because I just said what I did. But this crochet project is the same as the cross stitch project. No one's going to know the inner workings of your stuff unless you tell them. 
And of course, I'm telling you so you guys can learn. But if you want to, you can stop right here. Easy peasy, done, simple. Or you can go on and do the next part and give your uh, buddy a little mouth. Your call doesn't have to have a mouth. But since we're learning stuff tonight, that mouth is going to start off the exact same way our little buddy did. With a magic ring, which is again, hold the tail in one hand, loop across, hold on to that, and we're going to put six single crochet in the magic ring. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's it. That's that's the entire piece. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull our tail here, use the magic and make everything round and pretty. But to finish it off and round it out, we're going to do a slip stitch in our first stitch right here to make it round and pretty. So pull yarn through, pull yarn through what's on your hook already, and then finish it off. Leave yourself a bit of a tail because we're going to sew this puppy onto our little squid buddy. That tail is probably way too long, but I'd rather have a tail that's too long than a tail that's not long enough. Because that's frustrating. So, once again, break up that tapestry needle. Or if you really want to, um, you can also use uh, black thread and a, an actual needle and just give them a little mouth that way. You can be creative. You can even get cute little beads and like sew things on their head. It's your call, it's your squid. You do what you want with your squid. Personally, when I'm working with small things like this though, I try and center it the best I can, figure out about where I want it. And then you're gonna sew a bit haphazard. You're not going to be able to sew like you would normally, which is just, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. Because this is so small, you're going to want to go down and sew across this thing. It's kind of, you're going to crisscross applesauce this thing's face. That way it's secure. That's also the easiest way to do it. Because if you try the other way, you're just going to make your hands hurt and make yourself a little crazy. If you're not already crazy because you're watching me crochet an octopus. I'll need about four or five stitches there. No big. And then I'm gonna do my handy dandy weaving end and weaving in ends. And I wanna bring my tail down to the bottom. I'm gonna loop this little puppy into my tapestry needle, stitch that into my octopus, bring that down here. And this is this is my personal habit. You don't have to do this. Some people will look at what I'm doing and just <gasps> clutch their pearls and panic because what is this heathen doing to our to our yarn projects? I'm tying knots, I'm keeping it secure. I'm also putting it in a place where I can easily get to it and hide it. Because to be fair, wherever your project is ending, that's probably where your biggest gaps are gonna be. Depending on your project. And I'm gonna bring my hook and we're gonna make those tails disappear. So now we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six tails hiding in our little squid buddy. That's okay. You know why that's okay? One, no one's gonna see it unless they cut open your squid, which is, again, is very rude and awful because you just made them a thing and cut it open in front of you. That's terrible. Two, they're not gonna know unless you tell them. You know my bad habits. 
Why? Because I told you. You can choose to have my bad habit, or you can choose to better yourself and not have that habit and learn a different habit. I just know that I, when I first started off and I was weaving in ends, weaving in ends. Oh, that's confusing and difficult to say. When I was weaving in ends, my stuff over time was unraveling and falling apart. And that made me, as a crafty person, feel pretty terrible because I would, I'd worked hard on it, but it's falling apart. But now, with my handy-dandy trick that my mother-in-law would probably not agree with, my stuff doesn't fall apart. So, spoiler alert, if you buy any dolls from my website, there's going to be knots inside the doll. You can't see the knots. I know they're there, and you watching now know they're there. But they're secure, and they're not going to go anywhere. I don't have to worry about you or your friend or your kid or your brother's, sister's, cat's roommate destroying the piece because it fell apart while they were playing with it. I don't have to worry about that. And that's fantastic. So I not the inside of my stuff and weave in the ends. Makes me feel more secure. So that, my dearies, is how we make a squid octopus little buddy. And the pattern we followed today was a free pattern that I found on Ravelry.com which if you are starting crochet or knitting, Ravelry, R-A-V-E-L-R-Y dot com, it's a fantastic place to go because they have patterns you can buy, patterns you can do for free. If you're getting into the project, project or you're trying to learn how to do it, this is a place to go to get easy things. The search function is simple. You can change, you can decide what uh, type of project you're doing, you can ask if it's a pattern you can buy for free or, I'm sorry, pattern you can buy or use for free. Uh, you can decide, you can search by clothing or function, toy, bag, slippers. You can actually search for this and then type in what you want. You can look for appliques, those are like pretty much the crochet version of a patch that you sew onto blankets, hats, jackets, whatever. You can search by colors, you can search by yarn weight, by hook size. The website's fantastic. It helped me immensely when I first started out. It's actually where I found this pattern. This is actually a delightful free pattern from Mohu. I unfortunately am probably butchering that because I don't know how to properly speak with accent marks. But uh blog.mohumohu.com um, they have free patterns and tutorials on their page um, this pattern a free free to use b they're also not okay they are, they are okay with you selling these in small quantities don't put not to put them out on you know have amazon mass produce and warehouses kind of stuff but selling a handful here or there at like a convention or making it for somebody, they're completely okay with that. If you start using Ravelry or free patterns, my biggest suggestion for you is if you don't know if you can use it or sell it, talk to the person whose pattern it belongs to. Talk to the message them. They're creators just like you. And they would much rather you ask than they see their stuff being sold or underpriced or in the wrong in the pe in their eyes stolen because you are claiming it as theirs. If you use a free pattern, make sure you always give the person credit who created that pattern. So even though I can't pronounce the name properly, Mo Mohu, again, I'm very sorry if I'm butchering that, it are the ones that created this adorable little buddy and actually helped me when I started four years ago because it again quick to whip up and it's great if you have uh, little balls of yarn left over at the end of a skein 
if you have scrap yarn, these things are a cinch to make. They're fantastic. Like you just saw, we just made one a little, little, little under an hour. And now we've got twins. My kiddo's going to be so happy. <laughs> um, well, join us again tomorrow. I should be playing some form of console game. Could be either me by myself or it could be me and Captain Kyle Games. We're going to find out. And I will let you all know, well, I guess, according to Captain Kyle and my in my chat bar, we're going to be going doing Sea of Thieves tomorrow. So join us for some handy dandy piratry as we may or may not try and pop some achievements that are a bit difficult. We're going to do some tall tales or a tall tale. Apparently those are very long quest chains. We're going to do that tomorrow. But I'll probably slowly try and work towards, I think it it's a hoarder achievement. There's an achievement for having 20 chests in your boat at one time, which sounds stupidly dangerous. But we'll find out tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to put out a poll to figure out what you guys want to see me make up next time. Because if not, I'll probably do something like uh, granny squares, because those puppies can be used for so many different things, and they're so easy. Um, but yeah, I will link in my description box below for all the materials used. I will link uh, Mohu's website, but please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And again, if there's things you want to see me make, you are curious how to make happen, you want to see something in your head come to life drop me a line critter search in it tumblr facebook um twitter instagram here on twitch here on youtube i am everywhere under Crit critter stitching it's kind of hard to miss me all righty my dears you all have a good night please stay hydrated if you are anywhere hot like we are Please be careful of seismic activity if you're anywhere in California because the ground is moving. And try and stay dry because apparently there's a tropical storm in our area. Who knew? Anyway, we'll see you later. Have a good night.